Everybody's having a productive day, feeling a blessing like I always say. It's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, it's 6 in the morning. Uploaded a video. I'm doing another video. I'm drinking my good old cup of joe. I don't know why the cup's pink. I just found it in the cabinet, so don't judge me, all right? This ain't Bud Light, all right? It's just coffee. And uh, wanted to bring this story to you guys' attention. Uh, somebody asked me a long time ago, like I said, I write things down. I go back to all the questions and responses that I need to respond to. Trust me, there's content that's off prison topics that people ask me to elaborate on. And I write those down too because I'm like, you know what? One of these days when I'm just done, I'm tired of talking about this stuff, I might do topics on these. That two, three thousand, four thousand views, you know, it's sufficient to me. It just means four thousand people just wanted to hear what I had to say. So that's important to me. So I, I'm covering all topics as much as I can. So with that being said, let's get into the video. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and rub my streams up. Share my music. That's all I ever ask. Thank you guys for your guys' support. And thank you guys for tuning in. Now, I did a video a while back about, you know, the circumstances and how I got busted because I had a co-defender who was an idiot who decided to run a red light and bring the cops straight to my house and jump the fence without giving me a heads up or even that look like run. And I got busted. Damn retard. So I'm in the back of the cop car, and I see my ex. She's talking to uh, the police, the popo, and uh, I'm, I'm dripping sweat. I'm, I'm coming down. You know, it's been a long five, seven days of just tweaked out my misery, wanting to shoot everything, moving, and I see them talking for quite some time. Now, mind you, I got, I knew I got caught with the burner on my stomach, which was a Glock 17 at the time. I pretty much knew that was that was confiscated, but I had all the other equipment hidden. A lot of it was hidden. But when I get to the police station and I get interrogated, they had everything. The Mini 14 with the 30 round clip that was attached to six different attempted murders. Um, the 357 who uh, had a particular homeboy from VCP's fingerprints all over it. So they were bugging me about that. And I was like, I ain't saying nothing. Forget that Jack in the Box burger and fries and soda just because you know I have an eight in seven days and you try to bribe me to snitch for a burger. No. I had been going to county jail. I was in Bob Wiley 41 for a long time and uh, I didn't I didn't get my discovery packet for like four months and I was advising my lawyer like I need my discovery packet. I need to know what evidence has held against me. I was trying to suppress my confession just based on the fact that I wanted to just drag it out. You know, I didn't say no names. I just spoke on myself and my situation and what I did. To make sure that my my ex at the time didn't lose her kids and they get busted because they had her in my police report as the driver. But I had multiple drivers. I mean, everybody drove me. Everybody knew what I was doing. I told everybody what I was doing when I got into the car. If I wanted to rob something, I was going to rob something. If you wanted to be in the car and get a couple hundred dollars, you know, more power to you. If not, drop me off. I'll run. So, you know, I was getting visits from my mom, my ex, chilling. We even got married. Yada, yada, yada. I, all I was thinking about was like, man, as soon as I get the visit, I'm going to put in for my boneyard visit, get my issue. Because it's, it's, it's been a while since I first saw. One day I'm getting a visit. I like, get ready for a visit. I'm like, cool. I go out there. I see my mom just like serious, just like straight being dead. I look like. You know what I mean? And then I see my ex right there just bawling like. <laughs> I'm like, what the f going on, man? So I sit down. My mom grabs the phone. She's like, hey, look, I'm going to be here for a couple minutes. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, you know, I just want to make sure you're all right. Did you get those packages? Yeah, I'm going to put some more money on your books. Yada, 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 yada. She goes, I'm going to leave. I'm going to let you talk to this B word. And she's all, just keep an open mind, mijo. Just keep an open mind. But just know, I got the discovery packet and I'm taking it to the homeboys from VCP. They're going to know everything. I'm like, all right. Bam, my mom leaves. She does what she said she was going to do. She dropped it off and VCP had everybody read it. Made multi I think she said she made multiple copies, like four of them. Distributed them around to everybody. And then she tells me that she said what she said. I, was, I didn't read the discovery yet, so me and her start arguing. You know, I just already done married her and everything. And we argued like a mother... I was like, what, dude? Like, I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. So I went and confessed. 
but as a man, I, I needed to. You know, I was I wasn't gonna let her go down for my mistakes. I didn't want her to lose her kids. I put her in this predicament. I could have just kept her home. I didn't have to do nothing and involve her in no shape, way, or form. So that was my fault. But you know, I expected her to realize the sacrifice that I made and be like, "Bro, just keep your mouth shut, bro. I got this. You know, I'm I take my own fall. Nobody's ever gonna take the fall for me. If I did it, I'm gonna pay for my mistakes. I'm gonna pay for my crimes." But she wasn't told anyways. Man, she said that we used to have meetings at her house, the, that I would invite the street regiment and all the homies. And then I, once they were left, me and my co-Ds would look at blueprints of all these liquor stores and talk about the getaways and how to do the in and outs. How we'd uh, smack the McDonald's for like six grand and how we did it by the college. And I was like, what? So I got the paperwork later like maybe not even not even that week bro like make me at the end of the month i got the paperwork and i'm reading everything like <gasps> like the cops didn't even know that i had everything stashed like behind the closet that's when that's where i put everything at and next thing you know they found a the shotgun the mini 14 the 357s knives the ski mask my gloves the the, the outfits i was wearing I even had a little piece of paper that I was sketching out these certain locations and then how are we going to hit them, what streets to take to get away, to get faster so we can avoid the big city, the big streets. I was like, bro, I'm f up. I'm done. It's over with. Finito. I can't even beat this in court. Maybe if I did handwriting analysis, I could have beat it, but still, I'd have to change my handwriting. At the time, everybody from VCP... And, and, and all the homies from Portos were real close to my family. They were real close to my mom and the homegirls that I was kicking with at the time. You know, I was just, I was just a like dude. I was a love dude. I put in work for the homies. I did what I had to do. I put my name out there. I worked for all the right people. So, you know, this, when you're working for the re regiment, uh, you kind of get that kind of respect and recognition. So I'll be calling my mom at the pad, just checking up on her, see how she was doing. And he'd be like nine homies at the pad drinking while mom having a good time. Throwing little parties with her. They were taking her to Charlie's. Going bar for... Like, they would take her to the bar and let her bar hop. But protect her. And keep an eye on her. They knew the guy she was dating. Her boyfriend. He drank. He drank with the homies. Dude, on a consistent basis. Like, every other week. If I'd call home. Little man was there. Menace was there. My cousin was there. Pablo was there. Buck was there. Bullet, when Bullet got out, was there. Listo, when Listo got out, he was there. Kukui was there faithfully. Even when there's no homies, Kukui was there faithfully. Hmm, makes me think. Was the homie bashing my mom? I mean, I wouldn't care, but, you know, I'm just thinking about it. I doubt it, though. She had, she had taste. My mom has taste. She got standards. She got standards. But my mom putting out the P-dub put a target on her back. The homegirl Becca, the homegirl Monica, everybody... We read the paperwork and we're like, "Hey, bro, we gonna smash her." This is what happened. I knew the homie Fro. Uh, I knew the homie Fro for a while. I had been kicking with them with like Demon. But most of the time, I kicked it with Fro. He was with uh, George Cervantes, Joey's little, uh, little older brother that passed away. Now, me and Fro, we were we mostly kicked it at the baby mom baby mamas and Honda spot, but we never kicked it like on a daily basis. I never really messed with them like that. But I knew of him. But everybody knew who my ex was. Everybody knew that we were together. Everybody knew that she was going to ride with me through the whole way, stay on the team, yada, 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 yada. He wound up hooking her up with a homeboy from Eastside. Now, I'm in New Corcoran, Sad FC yard, and I'm chopping it up with her on the phone. She doesn't even tell me that she's been seeing somebody else. She just starts crying over the phone like, I miss you, I wish you were home, it ain't the same no more, whatever, the whatever, feeding me all the bull crap. I'm writing her letters like every day, she's shooting me uh, stationary packs every day to keep in touch with her, writing her. And then bam, I'm doing burpees in the cell, counselor calls me, says, hey, here's your divorce papers. <gasps> I'm like, wow. So I let it go, bro. I really let it go. A few months later, she shoots me. I was already talking to some other girl from Visalia. A few months later, she shoots me a picture and, and, and a letter. She's like, hey, tell your homies to just leave me alone that I'm happy. And she shoots me pictures of her hugged up on this dude. I'm like, oh, fuck. The freaking nerve of this chick, bro. Like, how dare you? That's what kind of set me off. Now, I strike it up with the regiment on the streets. Shoot my letters out there. I knew who was running the streets. I knew I was going to get love for this. 
I was young though. I was only 19, 20. So yeah, I, that was my fault. I shouldn't have did what I did. But I brought the regiment involved, and I did enough dirt and enough and contributed enough money to the regiment where you know I, I was issued a favor here and there. They were willing to take care of this one if I actually went through with it. So I shoot a letter like, "Hey, boy, this is foul. This is faulty. I want old boy done." Well, the I was in a reception with the homeboy Goose for VCP. He was getting out. He knew the circumstances. Then my co-defendant that ran the red light was in count was in uh was in reception with me too in Delano. I chopped it up with him, told him what I wanted done. He went out to the streets. Pretty much they were they were looking for her. She was uh she was staying with my mom at the time, but my mom was kicking her out. But they were actually knocking on the door asking my mom if she was there. And my mom would lie because my mom didn't want nothing done at her house. She didn't want nothing done, period. She just put the check on blast so everybody could stop messing with her and stop showing love. But my mom didn't know how deep the politics really got. That fools were trying to do 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 boom 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 boom. So Kukui went over there, and I remember calling Kukui one day on the phone, and uh, he was at my mom's pad, and I was talking to him, and he went outside when nobody was listening. He was like, hey, what's up with this chick, bro? Like, I read it, bro. And he's talking in code. He's talking in subliminal. He was like, what's up, fool? You want me to, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'll get back at you. I didn't want to talk over the phone. I was like, I'll get back at you. Y'all, y'all get, You'll get a word from me, yada, yada, yada. Who that she's dating? Homeboys from VCP are blitzing them left and right. Left and right. Dude, they were running trains on his, his other baby mama. He had four kids by another baby mama. They were running backs on that chick. Shooting me pictures of her all drunk, messed up, partying with them. Like, hey, bro, we've been handling this for months, bro. Throwing it in his face in front of his kids while his kids are in the house, bro. Like, we, we got this, bro. We got this. Egg this car. I don't know why you would egg somebody's car. Whatever. Tagged all over his garage. Kept trying to, kept jumping them. But she had she stopped contact me after that. She, I don't know where she went. She just was disappeared. So I, everything goes on in a sad FC yard. I get transferred to uh, Susanville. But right before the riot kicked off in Susanville with the blacks, Psycho, which was a carna from Goshen that was running a regiment from San Jose, was coming back and forth from Tulare County to San Jose, and he was in touch with the carnales on the streets. And they were trying to reach me. I had lost contact with everybody. I was I was going through some stuff. I remember one day, uh, three of the monos walked up to me on the yard. And I was a squad leader at the time. I'm doing, you know, squad drills. You know, I'm making sure everything's okay. And they were like, hey, fool, can we have a minute? I'm like, yeah, what's up? And one, one of them was my the celly that ended up with me in Arizona who happened to be a hermano from Porterville. He was from Eastside. And he was like, hey, uh, we, got a, we, got a, we got a phone call from the, from the big homie on the streets. I'm like, all right. And pretty much that the regiment for the last two years have been blitzing this fool, smashing him, damaging his property, getting him for everything. Well, dude wound up riding the regiment. I look, but I didn't know he was, she was with a homie. That's, that was my fault. Woo, 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 woo. But, you know, we're already in love and she's pregnant. She's having a kid. You know, this is going to be my hyena. Big old spill. But the homies hadn't ran into her. They only been running into him. So the regiment felt like they were utilizing a little bit too much resources and paying attention to the subject too much that they were pretty much requesting me like, hey, bro, it's either they both go or we're just going to leave it alone, man. Just let it be. You know, stuff happens. I was already talking to two different hyenas and, a, and another ex that I was cheating on her with was where at the time on my team. And so I was like, ah, it's all good. I'm not even tripping. Just let it be, bro. I'm not even tripping, bro. She did what she did. She's a grown woman. She got to live with that. It's all good. And they were like, all right, then uh, I'll, we'll let the homie know. So I go back to doing my routine. Ride kicks off. I go to Arizona. Don't think much of it. I didn't hear about nothing for years. I didn't hear about nothing until like maybe 2012, 2000, the beginning of 2013. I ran into a homeboy from, uh, I want to say you some Esau Vadio, Sergio Anaya. And uh, he comes up to me and he talks, he, he introduces himself. He goes, hey, before I used to party with your mom, I used to do this. I used to chill with your family. Your bro, homies, hella love you from VCP. Hella, love, hella got mad love for you. And I'm like, that's what's up, bro. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. It's, it's messed up. I'm on this side, so I can't go back to that. You know, I can't go back to the homies that, you know, I cared about and I loved the most. He tells me a story, an interesting one. He said one day the homies are throwing a party. And then this is when the homie Buck's older brother, Bully, gets out. Well, my ex shows up at one of those parties. Her and her old man are not together no more. She was, you know, went back to her hoeisms, the hoe phase, and uh, she was partying with the homies. 
and Bullet, Listo, a lot of people that were out that are big names, big factors in VCP, Dreamer, they were all there at the party, and they knew who she was, and the homies had mad love for me. So this is what the homie told me. The homie was like, hey, bro, Bullet was trying to hit on her, trying to beat Guts, and she wasn't having it, that she wasn't trying to do that. She was just trying to drink and have a good time, and I'm like, yeah, I for sure was good, and then he tells me, like, Bullet, Bullet, like, whispered to her, like, hey, bro, I know you you snitched on wooty wooty woo. So, like, he was pretty much using that as, like, a, a leverage, as a bargaining chip. Like, bro, let me smack nothing. I won't say nothing. You don't let me smack, finna, you finna go. And she said, she still said no. So, the homeboy said he what they did is the homie walked up and grabbed a cookie jar. Boom! Just busted her face. Threw her through a, a sliding door. She, her hands and her face got cut up from the glass. And uh, they just, they just, they jumped her and let the homegirls jump her, sent her on her way. And that was the last time anybody's heard from her. She disappeared. At the time, Bullet was working with the Reds, was working with the big homies, was out there doing stuff, you know, with Bard, Dreamer. During that whole 2009-2010 indictment that took place, you know, Operation Red Soul and Operation Red Reaper, he was around during all that time. So I had heard about it, but I was already SNY, and uh, the regiment had turned me down for a particular favor that I was asking for, and that's what kind of made me rebel on the main lines. But that's what took place. And I'm in contact with her still to this day. I don't really don't talk that much. You know, I just see how she's doing. She sees how I'm doing. That's it. You know, but in a harsh reality, bro, no hard feelings. You know, people, you know, you put somebody else in a circumstance that's not part of this life, they're going to do what they got to do to protect themselves. But I think it was my fault, and I could I, I probably ruined a lot of aspects in her life for a while because I decided to be a young kid and use the street regimen to take care of my favors, to take care of my resentment, to take care of my hate, my jealousy, whatever, the, whatever I was feeling at that time, I shouldn't have been reacting on those kind of emotions. You know, I was the one involved in the gang life. I was the one being a gang member. I was the one working for the big homies. You know, a lot of women choose to be with us and love us for who we are and what we do. Some are even turned on by the felon image, the tattoos, the thug life. But it's no matter what, just like the Italians used to do. They never tell their my wives nothing. They just took care of business. They were told what to do and they would do it. But they kept their business out of it. That way they didn't have no reason to tell in case all these indictments and the feds and the FBI came cracking down. You know, homies on the streets, you be taking that same concept and just realize, like, bro, that woman that you got at home, that's where your safe haven's at. That's where your peace of mind's at. Don't get them involved in nothing. Even if that's the one you can count on the most, that's the one that's going to do dirt. That's the one that's probably proving herself little by little to have your back. If you love your woman, you won't get her involved. If you love that woman so much, you won't let her know nothing. And most importantly, if you love that woman, don't bring her around to homies. Because homies were... Dude, the homie smacked that one, and then the girl I was cheating on with, cheating on her with, wind up beating her guts like like a year later after I got uh, uh busted, and then I found out about it, and she swore up and down that like it never happened, but I know it happened because certain details came up, and I was like, interesting. How did he know that? How did he know where you stayed at? Stuff like that. And then I was that young homie that would man, you were locked up, bro. Your girl was free game. That was messed up with me. That's why I got so much trouble with the regiment, my damn self, with the, you know, violating bond number four. But those stories are for another day, okay? But look, see, that, I was just a kid back then. I knew better. I knew better than to get her involved. I knew better. I don't, I, now, I don't, I don't even blame her. Like, I don't even call her a rat. I don't even call her a snitch. Yeah, she did tell. But in reality, bro, she had to do what was best for her and the kids. And I was wrong for that anyways. That's why I don't hold nothing against her. But what tripped me out is how the regiment, like, when, when Bullet, you know, did what he did, he pretty much used the regiment saying, hey, bro, this, you know, the regiment's been after this hunter for a while. We haven't found her in a while. He used the regiment as a means to do what he had to do and get clear from putting hands on a woman and doing this and this and that. But some of the big homies that were involved back then that I, sank, that I wrote and sanctioned to have her blitz and have him blitz weren't responsible for the reg at the time. So this was all new information. You know, thank, I thank God that I'm out and uh, nothing's happened and she's living her life. She's doing her thing. She's raising her babies, so on and so forth. And, you know, things work out the way they did. But if anything was to happen and she's just so happy to not to be here anymore and somewhere else, you know, that would have been on my conscience. That would have been my guilty conscience talking to myself every day. Like, look, bro, I was a kid. I was being stupid. 
I was being hateful and look what happened because of my stupidity. At that, it could have all came back to me and then I would have got charged for, you know, conspiracy, premeditation. And I wouldn't be here today. And I wouldn't be able to wake up next to my son watching stupid Coco Melon at 6 o'clock in the damn morning laughing. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get some sleep because I got to go to work tonight. You know, I wouldn't be going through this. But, you know, things worked out for a reason. So I, those, are the, those are the blessings that I talk about when I say I count my blessings every day. That certain things didn't turn out the way that I thought they were going to turn out. The way they should have turned out. But they turned out different. And they actually turned out different in my favor. So, with that being said, thought I'd tell you guys that video. And like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.